in this rock there is the cave in which, um, which is dedicated to the Archangel Saint Michael, to Saint Michael. Uh, this cave, also called a grotto or er er ermitage, ermitage in uh, English and in Italian, uh, in this cave the monks uh, of the uh, uh, neighboring Benedictine monastery, which is situated in the uh, town Buminaco. Now it is completely destroyed. There is only one wall the, and several churches that uh, are the remnants of this ancient monastery. So the monks from this place uh, went to this cave to uh, spend here some time in prayers and being alone without any disturbances from the outside world. This uh, also they say that the Saint Tusio, a saint, an Italian saint of the third century who lived in the town of Paltuinum, uh, ancient town which is uh, now is very famous for the arche archaeological uh, um, archaeological uh, artifacts that are found in this city Peltuinum. Santusio he went also to this cave uh, to pray and finally he died because of starva starvation because he fasted uh, too much in order to have his soul very clear without any sins and in order to go to the paradise. So and finally he killed himself by this eternal starvation in this cave. Uh, so again his name was Tusio, Saint Tusio, and there is nearby a Borgo, uh, a fortified village that is also called Tusio. So this Borgo is dedicated to this saint that has stuffed himself to the death in this cave. Today it is the 30th of November. The winter in Italy starts on the 21st of December, according to the calendar. So the 30th of November there is no wonder that today is quite warm. Uh, however, in the night the temperatures here drop till minus 2, minus 3 degrees centigrade. Uh, this um, um, uh, grotto of San Michael uh, is situated near the uh, town of Bominaco and the town of Caporciano. This uh, zone was very rich in the 15th, 16th centuries due to the passage of the herds, sheep herds, from uh, the north of uh, southern Italy, so from L'Aquila region, from Umbria, uh, towards Puglia, so towards Bari, towards Foggia, the cities of the southern Italy. Uh, this uh, sheep herding uh, was uh, always circulating between north and south, and it was called the horizontal transumanza, horizontal sh sheep herding. Uh, all these uh, passing sheep and their shepherds were paying a lot of taxes for the neighboring to the neighboring c communes, and uh, these all were spent on building beautiful monasteries, churches, castles, and generally this zone was very very rich. However, after the uh, beginning of the 17th century, uh, suddenly I guess the Ireland, the Britain, Spain have taken the place in the international trade of wool, have taken their uh, place and Abruzzo could not compete with them, so all these uh, towns uh, went down, uh, went to the poverty. However, even now we can see the remnants of the former glory let's say. And by the way, this direction, if uh, you go, if you look to my right, uh, we went once, there are the towns of Pediciano, Fontecchio, um, this uh, all area here is covered by the pine trees, uh, it was, uh, f it, it was uh, repopulated by uh, the trees due to the government uh, efforts, uh, 
Uh, nowadays it is reforested, uh, the, uh, the fauna here is very rich, um, and today we are going through this pine forest. We are now in the castle of Buminaco. It was called before Muminacum in the uh, 10th, 11th century. This castle was built to defend the monastery of Benedictines that was below in the town of Buminaco. And here on the hilltop this castle was built. This castle has a rectangular form with a very high watchtower at its highest point. The uh, walls of the tower are very thick, uh, the, uh, around 2-3 meters the thickness of the walls. This castle was destroyed by Braccio da Montone uh, during the War of L'Aquila. And this uh, valley that we can see behind, uh, that's called the High Plain of Navelli. Uh, along this uh, valley, the Traturo Magno. Uh, was uh, situated. Traturo Magno is a pathway uh, that uh, was used by the shepherds to bring their sheep from the north to the south and from the south to the north. So they were paying taxes, that's why all the uh, castles here were built and were very very rich. So from here you can see the castles uh, San Pio delle Camere, uh, you can zoom in, Julia, towards this castle. Which one? Uh, this one. On the other side of the valley, San Pio delle Camere, we have been there several times. A very beautiful castle. By the way, to its left you can see Corno Grande, the mountain Corno Grande. Today we are quite lucky, the sky is blue and we can see all the mountain tops. Behind me uh, you can see the town of Caporciano. Caporciano. Uh, also, there was a, uh, a castle in the very center of this uh, fortified village. However, it was destroyed firstly in, uh, during a, uh, an earthquake at, in the beginning of the 20th century. Later, uh, in the year 2009 also, it was uh, destroyed partially, but now some parts are already restructured. So, also the story of this place, the uh, castle of Buminaco and monastery of Buminaco, is also uh, well uh, connected with the history of the pest, a uh, plague. So, uh, in the 18th century there was a big epidemic of the plague around these uh, places. For example, the neighboring uh, town of uh, Tusio, which was before called in some other way, uh, it was completely basically destroyed by the epidemic of plague, uh, as well as other castles in this zone. So a lot of uh, inhabitants that gained some immunity against plague, I guess, they all uh, fled to this castle and to this monastery, uh, because they thought that the prayers of the Benedictine uh, monks will help them to survive. Well, maybe they survived due to the immunity that they got from the plague, that's why they were the only survivors from the villages nearby. So that's why Bominaco grew exponentially and at some point uh, there were more than 2,000 uh, the population in it and it is a quite a high number for the medieval Italy. Afterwards, after the plague uh, went away, uh, all the uh, communes around were again rebuilt and again repopulated. Uh, and this castle, after it was this, uh, after uh, the beginning of the 20th century, already went into desolation. And now we can see only the remnants. Yulia, you can show this beautiful tower. Uh, its height is 27 meters. 27 meters. It is very high. This is the mountain Mayella, 3 kilometers, 500 meters. Uh, it is not a single peak, 
there are 27 peaks on these mountains and if you look uh, at the pictures taken from the satellite of this zone, Mayella looks like a large, large volcano. However, there are no volcanoes in um, Mayella zone. Generally in Abruzzo there is only one little uh, sulfur volcano near the uh, town of Corvara, uh, but uh, Mayella, although it looks like a large, mighty, powerful volcano, is uh, just a, a mountain that, is in f that was in fact a coral reef in the prehistoric times, uh, so uh, it's all uh, done from calcium. Calcium, and uh, that's why there are a lot of uh, grottos, a lot of caves, a lot of underground rivers and streams in these parts due to this calcarea, this calcium rich soil. This is the town of Caporciano. Uh, as you can see, nowadays it is almost depopulated. Uh, you can see some uh, cranes that are used for the reconstruction of the castle uh, because it was uh, largely destructed, destroyed during the earthquake of L'Aquila of 2009. Um, in medieval ages it was quite a big fortified village, a big town of 800 souls. Uh, however, uh, it was built long before the medieval times. Uh, in the 9th, 10th century, there was a Longobardian uh, village on its place. And indeed, when you go through these narrow streets, you can see the architectural forms that are typical for the Longobardian uh, defense, uh, defense construction. And even before, in the Roman times, there was a villa uh, of some rich Roman on this place, uh, because uh, this zone generally was governed by the city of Peltuino. And by the way, I'm saying, I'm uh, entitling it city, not a town, because its population was over 20,000 people, just imagine. So in Roman times, in uh, the city here, Peltuino, had more uh, people, had more inhabitants than nowadays in this whole uh, region of the Alta Piana di Navelli. There was a Colosseum that was quite big, and it was generally capital of the northern Abruzzo in the Roman times. However, nowadays uh, basically you can find just several walls, several cisterns underneath, um, under the earth that were used to keep the water in the case of a siege by the enemies, uh, because all the uh, stones uh, were used by the local populations to construct their own houses, their own towns, and basically you, in all these places you can find, for example, some uh, house where you can see that uh, part of the wall is in fact a column that was stolen, basically that was stolen from Peltuinum, and on which there is some uh, name of the street or the name of some emperor. So indeed, the locals were stealing uh, the uh, construction materials from Peltuinum. That's why you can uh, not see um, the remnants of its former glory. We are now in the other zone of the castle of Bominaco. Um, as you can see, uh, everything was burnt by infamous condottiere Braccio da Montone in the 15th century. However, it was restructured. I wonder if there are some cellars and some secret passages under this castle. This is our group, uh, the guys with whom we are walking today. As you can see, they try to take the tower by siege, but I guess they will not succeed. I guess they will be shifted, repelled down, and the castle will stay, will stay defended. What is striking for me is that every little piece of arable land is used here in Abruzzo. In even some small valley, between some small 
two small unknown mountains, some little canyon, is always used for uh, cultivation nowadays, or was used for cultivation before. Uh, when you go through the forests here, sometimes you can see very small pieces of arable land, say 100-200 meters long, and you can see the signs of agricultural cultivation uh, on these places. So it's very striking for me, because in Russia sometimes you can see the fields that go till the very horizon, which are uncultivated and which are full of just weed, just some forest bush, uh, and there is no use of this arable land.